I know. <laughs> <laughs> Public now, sign and share. 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 No. I don't know if we're live right now or not. <laughs> we're trying to make sure it's <laughs> make sure everything is running all right. Going where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna share it to my personal Facebook and not my it's weird. The other link was there you go. We have 20 people watching. <laughs> Thank you guys. Just give us 30 sec, 10 seconds. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. You just keep it. Yeah. yeah. Why is this not going? Nope, that was not what it was supposed to look like. <laughs> uh, why is it working other posts, not this? There we go, this button. There we go, be that link. There we go. Share. Perfect. And one not to share. And then the one to share the one. Okay. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Technically challenged over here. <laughs> um, and copy link. Post. Post. Oh. Awesome. All right, I don't know if that's working or not. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's make sure that this is live yeah. as well. Cool. Yeah, it says we're having trouble playing this right now. Check ski racing. Oh, it's on there. Ski racing. Yeah. Or I'll show you on. <laughs> yes. Is it going on yours? Oh, perfect. We're on. We're on. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Sorry about these technical difficulties. I'm um, trying to figure this out. It's uh, the new world we live in, right? Yeah, we're exactly. To mess up <laughs> Zoom and Facebook Lives and everything else. So. Well, we're not too late for this start. Only five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, yeah. My um, name is Mark Saravaka. Um, um, this is. I'm Ted Liggy. Um, yeah. Thank you, guys, for joining our virtual fit night. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely weird uh, this fall, but at the same time, uh, we're still excited for winter and I'm sure we're gonna be able to get on snow. And uh, we are definitely psyched to get on snow. Ted is actually leaving uh, next week, right? Yeah, I headed over to Solden on Wednesday, so pretty excited to uh, get going here. It's, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a different season, that's for sure, and we'll see how it goes, but excited to get over to Europe. We had great camps up in Hood and seeing's feeling good, body's feeling good. 
you know, I've been working out at home for the most part. You know, <laughs> since the summer, it's been a different one for sure, on <laughs> all sorts of levels. So, um, but excited for it to start snowing and start skiing here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks again for coming. Um, I'm sure most of you guys know about Shred. Uh, however, uh, you know, those of you that don't, um, we're at Ted's house. This is actually, was it this house that, the brand that we started? I don't no, know. No, it was my previous. The previous, previous <laughs> yeah. house. Uh, yeah, so I started Shred in 2006 uh, with a friend of mine, Carlo. He had started Slide Tech a couple years before that. And we actually met at like a random race in Italy. And he had these like cool carbon fiber shin guards that he made, made it on his own. He's a materials engineer, so he was like all spiffed out and that kind of stuff. But he just made them for himself. And then he ended up making some prototypes for Jimmy Cochran and myself. And then he snowballed that into, into Slytech. And then we became friends through that. And then after I won the Olympics in 2006, I was really not excited about anything out there on the market on the goggle side of things. I felt like you could wear like a UVEX and you feel like a tool if you go on a powder day. <laughs> and it worked okay for racing. And then anything that was free ride or snowboard or free ski oriented, you couldn't get in the tuck because it didn't have a wide enough field of view. So I feel like there was a big market segment that could address both like the usability for ski racing, but also like having a coolness factor that you need for going on free skiing. And I felt like that was the niche that I was trying to fill with shred. And then having Carlo being an engineer helped us bring the innovative side of things. We had the first flexible back protector a couple of years after that. Um, now we're working with MIT to make, our contrast boosting lenses and just, you know, along the way creating a lot of innovations in the space. And that's been cool to kind of follow that journey, but always with like the vision of trying to make products that uh, help me go faster on the mountain and help performance and help bring that to the general person out there too, to be able to enjoy the mountains more. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. That's, uh, I think if there's anything about skiing is like enjoying your time out there because, yeah. you know, like even, even if you're outside the gates, having fun, powder, groomers, whatever, um, yeah, that's all what we all want to be practicing this winter. Yeah. Um, so today, uh, because there's not so many equipment nights at each of your clubs, it just varies by state, it varies by places around the world. Um, we're going to go through the line, uh, you know, quite quick today, but we're going to show you how you can um, fit yourself at home. Uh, that's not to say that shops aren't open to welcome you in. You can prepare yourself to, when, before you go into the shop. And uh, why not when you get your boots fit? get your helmet and goggles set up there. Um, or if you're really far away from a shop, you can always go on our website and order that way. So you can be uh, safe and you can see, you can be safe and you can uh, have fun, have fun out there. Um, I think today, uh, what we were gonna go from head to toe, we're gonna go goggles, helmet, back protector, shin guards. Um, that's how we usually start. And I guess we start with our goggles, right? How important, our goggles. <laughs> goggles are super important. I mean, that's where we started. That's been our bread and butter. Always from the get-go, like the most important thing for us was to be able to see in more conditions and also be able to like not have your goggles get in your way. I wanted to be able to get in my tuck and never see my frame. And that's perfect for racing. It's perfect if you're like free skiing, you're gonna hit your head on a tree if you're powder skiing or you know, some Joey's gonna come and sideswipe you. But in ski racing, you need to be able to see out of the top to see your goggles. Otherwise, there's no chance in tucking. Um, so that was like the number one thing. And then anybody who skis on a cloudy day or races on a cloudy day knows that you can get two seconds faster just with like a slight change in, in light conditions. So lenses were always like super important to me. I was super picky about that. When we started working with the MIT Sports Lab, we we're talking about like issues we wanted to try to solve in our space. And lenses were the first thing that popped up to my mind. Like I was like, if I can make a better lens, I can get faster just like that. Like that's so easy. I'll, like, I'll hope for the flat light days because I have an advantage. And so that's where we've come up with our CBL lenses. Um, and also like the idea there was like, you're not always changing lenses for every slightly slight change in lens or in uh, weather conditions. I wear like the same lens pretty much every single condition, whether it's foggy to like the solar rays up in that hood. Um, you, you say, it's funny though, because like I feel Back in the day when I raced, when I was a kid, like everybody, like racers never had mirrored lenses. Like, yeah. so tell us about a little bit about like the contrast boosting lens and like how the, is, does the mirror really affect it or, or is it? What, so actually like the mirror can actually like help 
uh, like the mirror, like so how we've designed like our mirrors and everything, it's like to try to help actually boost the contrast. So like it looks cool, but also like, so the way we test them is like in a light box, like in MIT, and so they're testing a bunch of different lenses from our competitors to us. And we're just trying to figure out the, like the right uh, dyes and different materials and all these different things. But the lens tint is also part of that. So trying to like boost the contrast and everybody's eyes are a little bit different for like what color they perceive. Yeah. And the lens, like filter, the, the lens uh, mirror changes that a little bit. So like I use Hero a lot and I also use um, the sky reflect a lot. Yeah. Those are like two that I like race with a lot of, they like work better with my eyes, but like you love Ruby. Yeah. Uh, you love the glass lens. Yeah. So it's like a little bit different from person to person because some people's eyes like pick up on red more, some like I pick up more on like the blue green. Um, but the idea is like always trying to like boost that ability to see better on flat light, see those ruts, um, see the snow conditions. I mean, that makes such a huge difference when you're out there. So, yeah. Um, that's, that's VLT essentially in the end, visual light transmission. You'll see, you might see that acronym on some websites or you might see some people talking about VLT. VLT percentage is essentially the amount of light that goes through the lens. When it comes to shred contrast boosting lenses, VLT is like totally relative. Like we'll be like in the middle range. However, I'll be wearing uh, this glass that Tad was talking about on a nasty, nasty powder day or on a bloomer day up at hood because the lens is so versatile, you'll be happy no matter what. What do you do with night skiing? Do you wear the sky reflect at all? When you I wear the sky reflect still on night skiing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, night race and everything. I've been using the sky reflect, so yeah. So that's what's cool is our, uh, $200 goggles, uh, the Simplify and the Rarify will come with that bonus lens to Sky Reflect. So you're also set up to um, either for your night training or uh, you know, for those really, really nasty days if you have issues, with, like especially big issues with flat light, um, like, uh, like Garmish or uh, Solden on that, app, that yeah. one afternoon was nasty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, that's our goggles. So we have, a lot of our goggles, you'll also notice they're OTG. So they'll have inserts cut into them. So you, if you have to wear glasses when you ski, uh, you're gonna be set with these ones. You don't have to be wearing those funny huge goggles that will stick out and snow coming in and all that moisture. Um, so you have these, Rarify and Simplify at 199. And then you'll have this Smartify and Amazify at 159, and these are just the stock lens goggles. This is the one and done, good to go goggle. Um, still OTG, very universal fitting. Um, this, these are the goggles that will fit a 10 year old kid up to me. You know, I have a pretty large head, I have a large helmet, so this goggle will still fit me fine. And then one thing that's pretty cool for uh, the bargain guys and gals is the monocle here. Uh, this is a really interesting addition because it's at 99 bucks and it comes with like a very low light specific lens. It's not contrast boosting, but you could see it has a little bit of that pink tint in it and uh, that'll get you dialed. Like this could be your night skiing goggle, for example, or your just rainy day goggle that you wanna have. Um, so this one is also really nice because the nose uh, is able to really hug to your bridge. So those that have issues with goggles always falling onto their noses, the monocle is the way to go. And we go all the way down to the Tykes kids goggle, the mini. That's what Jack wears, my yeah. three-year-old son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not, not like the super high-end contrast boosting lens. However, this is a really nice carved lens that, ha that we have in it. Uh, the foam on the inside, this is not like your run-of-the-mill Walmart goggle. This is a high-end lens for a little ripper that wants to go out and have fun too. Yeah. Yeah, so Ted, how do you fit your, like, which goggle do you use? Which one do you like? Yeah. I mostly go between the Simplify and the Mazify. Um, for a long time, I was in the Rarify. Um, but I just kind of like, like the look of the cylindrical lens, so that's kind of why I've gone that direction. Um, and I can't say like if there's a big preference between the Simplify and the Amazify, both of them, no issues with field of view. Um, yeah. So they both work when you're talking and um, whether you're in Bangan and you're going 100 miles
miles an hour in your tuck or you're in a slalom course and no issues with, you know, eyes watering from speed and all that stuff. So um, both of those are great options. I mean, Tommy Ford only wears like the Verify. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so like everybody has that like, preference on look and fit. Um, so yeah, it depends on, the, it depends on the person what you're really into and what you like look by But um, I mean, I just love like the look of the Simplify. It's like such a clean, simple look. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, the look of the, the Mazify is, is awesome. And they both fit like, you couldn't fit, fit them better into a helmet as well. So yeah. and that's always important to have like a perfect, no perfect down. lineup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely key. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, let's see, do we have any, we'll do questions at the end and uh, we'll keep on rolling here through to helmets. Um, helmets are, yeah, a big thing. You're going to hear us talk a little bit about technology, but I kind of want to preface the helmets as fit is the most important thing. Fit is so key to your helmet. Um, you know, I, I think that whenever, sometimes I would see a kid that's just so excited, like I want Ted's helmet, I want to look like Ted. The helmet doesn't fit, it's okay. You can switch to different brands, have different sized uh, fitting helmets. Um, it's okay. Uh, the, the safest thing for you is to have the one that fits nice and snug on your head, not loose. Um, now it's going to be maybe a little trickier when you, if you're, uh, want to stay at home and do a sizing at home uh, is, is quite easy actually. Uh, what you do is you just uh, grab a normal cloth uh, measuring tape, uh, you, like usually a seamstress shop would have it. And uh, that's- Where you get a piece of string and lay it down string. on a yep. ruler. No, you <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would probably do. I probably wouldn't be able to find one of those. So yeah. piece of string. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Work, works well too. And, uh, and you get yourself a TED. And uh, when you measure, you really want to be measuring uh, at the widest point of your head. So that's about like a, about a three quarters of an inch above your uh, above your ears. So um, about 59. Yeah, you're, I didn't actually measure that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got yours right. <laughs> um, that this is the this is what you could do easily at home. And the way we uh, engineer and design the helmets is literally this. Like we do this in our office. Like when we try to figure out how to size up our helmets, we go around the office. We even at like sales meetings when we're talking with well, as many people as we can, we try to get as many test subjects as we can so we can get the more universal thing, uh, helmet. Um, what's cool is- And that's something we've like made a huge jump in the last yeah. few years too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like our Basher Ultimate, like everybody fits in itself so yeah. far. I mean, that's like something that's been really good. Also our totality fits. Yeah. Yeah, the totality. Awesome as well. Really so, I mean, there's, we've, there had, had, we had, we've had like some fit issues several years ago, and now I think like our stuff is fitting everybody. So, yeah, I think you can be confident that we can fit you in a helmet now. Yeah, it's so nice. It's uh, definitely, uh, that, that, that was a big change, I think, in this company. Not only that, but we are also, we have some really cool pieces of technology uh, that come in all of our helmets. One specifically is our, our rotational energy system. And uh, this is a technology that we were able to, uh, you know, we were approached by several of the big uh, technology brands that are out there right now that you see on a lot of uh, other helmets um, in the past. And, you know, really in the end, we just coming from a family of being very engineered mind, uh, engineered minded, uh, is more bulk really wasn't something that we wanted to add to our helmet to, uh, you know, to kind of to fix a problem that's out there. So what we did, we went very simple. We added these rotational energy system pads that are all over our helmet, I'll show you. But they're these little pads that are able to move independently from the shell of the liner um, without adding any weight to your helmet, uh, without adding any bulk, which is why the helmet fits so good now. Um, and uh, in your, it's in all our helmets. It's in everything that we make. So you, you can rest assured when you're buying tread, you're taking care of rotational forces. Um, yeah, so another thing that we added to that, because everybody's been talking rotation, 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 but it seems like some people are forgetting about the linear impacts uh, that occur in, a, in an accident. Um, and this is something that we kind of had dialed since day one, right? Yeah. One of the things we've, uh, I mean, with our back protectors, our slide tech foam was, is like far and away the best foam out there on the market. And 
few years ago, we actually ended up integrating that into our helmets with our no shock. This is actually like what we put in our helmets is cold molded into our helmets. Um, and that this little ball keeps rolling off the table, but uh, is cold in our helmets in the impact zone. So it actually absorbs more of energy in a, in a linear impact. So you have both things working in tandem. So it's a 360 degree uh, energy and impact system that's helping from the both the rotational side and the linear side because when you're smacking your head hard, it's it's important. And also this will recover um, more so than an EP, the EPS um, as well. So that's a really important piece of it too. Um, so you'll see that you can rip off like the liner on the inside yeah. of the helmet and you can see the... Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So it's in like, it's strategically placed in areas that will take on the most impact. Um, and so the idea behind this is, it's the hexagonal and conical shape. So the geometry of the material actually helps absorb more energy um, and then also co molds nicely. So it has like the differential between the two foams that actually add, add value um, on the impact side of things. So I don't know, do you think, I think they were able to see this. This is actually something that we do. Yeah, that's our drop ball test. Yeah. And you, you have a video, we have actually a video of Ted doing it as well on the website. But this is, a, this is a foam, it's a polyurethane foam that you see in a lot of other brands out here. We, this was, we used this. It was 2008 foam for us. 2008 foam, <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. Um, and that's in the helmets. And what we do is we just do this drop ball. We drop the ball, and if you guys can see how high it bounces, that's, it means it's not absorbing all of the impact. Yeah. Um, yeah, the less it bounces, the more energy it's sucking up. Yeah. And you want it to suck up all the energy. All the energy. This blue foam is our foam uh, that's in our back protectors. A lot softer. Um, you know, we actually, way more pliable. Way more pliable. We were able to put it uh, initially into our helmets, but then, and it's not as temperature sensitive too. It's not yeah. going to be as hard as a rock. Like this VPD or whatever you want to call it is, it's hard as a rock when it's, yeah. when it's cold out. Whereas ours is definitely not more flexible. Yeah. Um, and then we weren't satisfied with having the best foam in the market. We want to take it another step further, even lower some volume and add the conical, no shock shape to it. And it just like it sucks it up, sucks up the energy. And so that's allowed us on our back protectors to do the same thing. We're actually add some breathability to the back protectors. Uh, comfort it allows it to flow better on your back. Um, and then it's actually add, allowed us added it to the helmets as well. So it's had a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. And this is again, like, like we said, it's 360 degrees of uh, protection around the helmet that allows you to be safe. Um, uh, however, in the end, like if you had a nasty crash with your helmet, do you switch your helmet after? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing. Uh, I think like no matter what, uh, bells and whistles, again, like I said about fit, you have that head injury, you have that accident where you felt, uh, that you hit that helmet. We don't know what could have happened inside of, uh, between the shell and the, and the foam in your liner. Uh, so you definitely want to switch that up right away. Uh, if you've had your helmet for more than a couple of years, another thing that you really want to consider is uh, time to switch a helmet. You know, this is uh, your most important uh, piece of hardware. <laughs> so Maybe your head's supposed to last forever. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take care of it. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely take care of it. Yeah. Um, so now you know how to fit yourself at home. We have a few different uh, helmets to choose. Uh, the Basher Ultimate, the one that Ted. Uh, whereas uh, this is, starts at 300 bucks, and uh, then we go down to the Basher, uh, which is going to be a little bit of a, a thicker, a uh, little bit of a snugger fit. Um, that's going to be at 179, and then we're going to have the mini for the for the mini Jaxes. Uh, where does is he wearing the mini yet? Uh, no, he's just he's not quite big enough. For the mini. Right. So he's three. So. <laughs> well, he when he was skiing last year, he was two. Maybe he fits in now. I need to go try. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. might fit into totality. Maybe, maybe yeah, yeah. He, uh, so <laughs> we have the Basher Mini. That's a FIS uh, a certified helmet uh, at one fifty nine. Uh, that's in size small and medium. 
those sizes, small and medium, are exactly the same as the adult sizes, small and medium. We just have it in those uh, in that smaller run, so it's more accessible for the kid. Uh, and you can like spot them on the hill. It's in its own little colorway. Uh, you should check it out on our website. Um, and yeah, that's uh, Ted. You're wearing the Basher Ultimate, of course. That's the colorway I'm using right now yeah, too. This is what you're wearing. Just flash. Like just flash. I remember when you were proposing this colorway. It was, uh, it was, it was we all were pretty hooked on it right away. Yeah. Let me put yeah. it closer. And you can go to the website, but yeah, it's pretty badass looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, before I forget, those helmets, the the bashers, the hardier helmets. If you just want to have one helmet for everything, uh, you'll need to get a chin bar for it as well. It's a chin bar that's specific to uh, this uh, hardier helmet to the basher at uh, 29 bucks. Um, this is a, you know, it's a screw in chin bar and uh, a really good thing to have when you're first learning how to uh, ski slalom. Like right away when you're getting to slalom and starting to cross block, that's when you want to do it. Um, when you're free skiing, I'm sure all your coaches are telling you, take that chin bar off um, because it is uh, safer to free ski without that chin bar. So then we have our totality, which is our slalom slash free ski helmet right here. And you can see, do you wear a chin bar when you, when you ski slalom, Ted? I have the last few years. Well, I don't ski that much slalom anymore. <laughs> the last few years I've been, I started wearing one. I got a gate to my nose and I like, cut my get nose open pretty badly and I decided I'd switch over. So I have been was really lucky in my career that I didn't really get any gates to the teeth or face that often. Then I broke my wrist and then I missed a cross block and got a good gate to the face. So um, I started wearing them and then it made me actually feel a little bit more confident to throw my head down, down yeah. the course. So yeah, I'd recommend it for sure. Yeah, totally. I agree. Yeah. Uh, teeth are expensive. $29 chin bar or <laughs> very expensive dentist bill. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, what's what's an addition here that you'll see is um, on our soft gear helmets is we have a ratchet system in the back that will allow the helmet to uh, fit better. You know, with the uh, with our uh, basher, our fist helmet. Uh, again, that's another thing we're not really psyched on bulk. Uh, no ratchet system in the back. That's another piece of bulk that we're adding to the helmet. Uh, we're able to fit you perfectly with the liner itself. Uh, so, so you're dialed that way. Um, and in the basher, there's two different sets of ears, a thick yep. and a thin ear, yep. and a thick and a thin flat, or, uh, pad set, so you can like dial it in super custom. Yeah, that's really nice to do. Yeah, yeah so that's our Totali helmets at 159 uh, with the no shock material in it, or at 129, just, uh, just the base model. Yeah. So going down, back protection. Ted, when do you wear your back protector? Always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah the back protector is a big thing. I, I remember when I first uh, had to start, because I was, I knew Carlo, I knew you, but when I met Carlo as well, but he started uh, make like, he's saying, Mark, you know, try the back protector out. And I was like, oh, okay. And first day on the chairlift, I was like, I don't know if I like this. And then after that first day, I couldn't stop wearing it. It's like kept me warmer, kept my back nice and straight. And yeah. I had some nasty crashes, even in slalom, where yeah. I'm glad I had it. Yeah, back slapper is no fun. And that protection definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, like you said, like having your back warm, like keeping that cool warm, especially like when you're taking laps and your speed too, like mm -hmm. that's huge. And just that mobility to it. And um, I feel like that like, keeps like your core in there tight too. So. All those things are benefits. Um, yeah, this is something that uh, uh, everybody's starting to wear now. Free skiers are starting to wear. You're getting a lot of everybody's wearing a back protector, and it's also there's kind of no more excuse for us ski racers to be like, I'm only really going to wear it when I'm going to be skiing super G. You know, this is something that you can wear in slalom GS and uh, super G because of uh, the technology that we were that we just showed you with uh, with slide tech. You have here this foam. This keeps on rolling, doesn't it? You have this foam that's super pliable. This technology that's able to keep you comfortable, but absorb even more impact comparatively to a really stiff, slow response foam um, that might not be as comfortable. And that might you might be complaining 
for the whole time you own that back protector. So we have the flexi right here that you see, and you can even see on the inside of it how thin it is. And this is what we're talking about. Same idea with the hexagon shape. You can roll it up. And even if that with it that thin, it's still certified. Yes. Or like there's a lot of back protectors out there, not three times as thick as that that aren't certified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Check so. that certification. It's level one and two certifications that you're that will be denoted on all back protectors. That's super key. Mm -hmm. Um when we offer our back protectors, you know, I showed you guys the vest here with the zip on the front. You know, sometimes for the junior racer, that's a that's a great idea. Uh, that's what I wear, like when I go like free skiing, powder skiing, trees and stuff like that. That's yeah. how you wear the vest. But then we have us as, as ski racers. We definitely want to be uh, low profile. Ted, yeah, that's my back. This is yours. This is my back. I mean, so I of course wear the thicker one for racing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like more comfortable also like a back protector does add a little bit of an arrow advantage too so that's a piece of it um but it's just like you just feel way more comfortable i don't think there's a single guy in the world cup that's not wearing a back protector in any event i mean maybe there's a couple guys in slalom that don't wear them but yeah. across the board otherwise everybody's wearing them so um no excuses there for sure yeah and i see you took out your shoulder straps do you do you do that uh what for what reason you just like to have the minimal i just don't like the strap coming over when it's inside my suit like my suit's tight enough that it's pulling it so against my back yeah. and as it gets warm it just like kind of sticks there anyway so yeah. um i don't personally use it. i think if i wasn't wearing a speed suit then yeah i wear that's why i wear the best when i go free skiing yeah. because yeah. i don't have the speed suit and they sticking it to my back so yeah, exactly. um I think that's personal preference. I've seen some guys use the use the shoulder shafts. I think also like when I first started racing, you weren't legally by fist allowed to have the shoulder straps. So I just like got stuck in feeling this way. So is that still a thing now? I don't think I don't so. Think so. <laughs> we I still have I still have uh, shops telling me I, they're like, oh, is this still a rule? I'm like, I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is. Especially not for uh, U12s or. Uh, yeah. Young guys, so I think you, you guys are all set. So you can customize this back protector however you like. You can go a la Ted with the no shock, which is a little thicker. Um, you know, and you know, Ted definitely rips super fast in GS. So I could definitely recommend this to you to kids uh, skiing uh, GS and Super G. Uh, but we have the flexi version, which is a little thinner, and that's something that you can just put on yourself every morning like just it's just with your ski boots you know like bring your back protector and ski boots put them on your back protector is always on and, and ready to go so yeah yeah um and then guards uh that's a big one you're you're not you said you're not skiing that much slalom right now <laughs> no, see a lot of gs though <laughs> <laughs> um in in when I, I believe you're off the hill, oh jeez I'm oh, sorry <laughs> when you uh, when you first met Carlo you were talking about shin guards right he yep. was a materials engineer so why don't you tell us a little bit about that how you guys started talking about shin guards and about slide tech and all that yes back when I met him I was probably 2004 2005 and I was mostly only seeing Solomon then um, and he was making carbon fiber components for helicopters and Formula One cars and all sorts of stuff like that so. He was very well versed and he made these super cool customized carbon chain guards and so that's how we met and started going from there so that's uh that's you know shin guards and arm guards we we're the first i think probably the first ones out there to have a hard hard arm guard that would go over your suit so yeah um we were innovators there and then trying to make also like a hard and long shin guard that was anatomical that didn't slip was a big piece of of it too and like the ribs aren't just like to look cool. They're supposed to like match up and like reset, um, reduce the friction on the gates too. So that's also a big thing. I mean, you'll see like guys sometimes like shin, shin off the gate and like get like tripped up. And that's the idea behind the, the ribs there is to, to reduce the friction on the gates so they run smoother across the shin. Yeah, totally. The material as well that we, yeah. that we co-mold into the carbon, uh, we're really able to have, you know, this might sound a little funny, but like the slickest guards uh, that, you know, that, you know, when yeah. honeys matter. Uh, reducing friction is, is important. Yeah. yeah. 
especially like like I was saying, like it's not necessarily like the friction on the gates, like so it's slowing you down, but it's like tripping you up in your turn. Like you don't want to have your turn, a double turn or like some sort of slide out because you like gets tripped up. You want it to like slide right off. So that's important. Yeah, well we and what we did too is we also don't want the guard to slip on your shins either. And that was like a big thing when uh, we were, you know, we we're trying to see how can we improve this uh, shin guard even more. Uh, we added these silicone strips uh, on the strap itself. And that's a big thing is like, I'll sometimes see kids with a guard like around their calf halfway down the course because <laughs> guard is either too big, but most of the time because little things like this, like that silicone strip will make a huge difference to make sure that the guard is nice and tight and snug on your shins. Um, yeah, that's, that's our guards. They come in uh, different sizes, of course. You don't have to get the Mondo size, but uh, we have the junior guards uh, starting here at 89 bucks, you know, and then we go up to the larger guards with the extension on the bottom. Um, when you fit yourself, and this is something that we have on our website, is uh, we have the measurements of the actual guard. And uh, what I normally do is, you know, as you can see, when I talk to an athlete, I really ask to you, when you do your measurement, do it with your knees bent, and then you're able to know where, your, where the shin guard is gonna stop. So you're not getting the bruise on, bruises on your knees, and you're also covering the buckles on your boots, on the cuff of your boot. Um, if you're having every year broken bu buckles on the cuff of your boot, that means that you're boot topping, you're a little closer to the gate than, uh, the average skier, and you need coverage there so you can save those, those boot buckles that way. And we have the product that extends all the way down. When you're fitting an arm guard at home, when you're measuring, you just cock your wrist back. That's, a, that's an important thing, is to make sure that to know where you want your guard to start. And then assess, do you have bruises on your elbows? Like that's another thing, you want your guard to be able to extend all the way to the end um, and that you have coverage there. So I forgot about the back protector fitting. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a big one. How do you, how do, where do you like to have your back protector covered? Yeah, I like the, my back protector to cover like mid butt. Yeah. So like over your like sacrum there, yeah. um, all the way up like to the shoulder blades. So one of the keys is you don't want it to, uh, so you want back there, like covering that. So that's also like nice because it helps like align your pelvis, I feel like when you're actually skiing, but also, you know, if you fall, you're oftentimes like smash right down there on your, on your sacrum. And then having it so like when it curls down, it doesn't like bunch up and hit you in the neck while you're looking up. Cause then you also add bulk with your home back there too. So. You want to have it so there's a good amount of room between the two of those. Nice talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's a big one. And you can do that with, you know, you need a partner uh, for sure to measure. And on the website, we show, it's a uh, funny wording we use. We use WS length, which in the end means waist to shoulder length. And we're that's how we're able to determine your perfect size. So do that with a uh, string or a uh, regular um, I wear a large on 5, 10, 5, 11. Yep. So yeah. that gives you a reference. You'll be dialed. <laughs> yeah, so fitting, that was a very important thing. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, guards, we have the shin guards going small, medium, large, and pro, uh, which is like the really long Mondo size one um, that, uh, that a lot of like taller or bigger tibia athletes use. Um, and then the carbon is going to be about $120 more than the DuPont, the Zytel plastic that we use. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what we, uh, that's the, that's a differentiation there. Um, hand guards. I see yeah. them on you and, and Tommy. Yeah, so I mean, I use the hand guards. I, so I guess we should start with gloves and then hand guards. Okay, we go. Like, yeah, let's do the, that. The story there is, so I think I broke my hand. I broke my hand like five, a hand or thumb, like five years in a row. And it just was like getting tired of it. It was like disrupting my season and my skiing. And um, along with that, I was ripping through gloves 
on like a weekly basis. Like it was just silly. The company it starts with an R. I was just like going <laughs> demolishing them and dem they were demolishing the hands. And then like I was like giving them feedback and they just didn't listen. So I was like, screw it. And I'm like, I own a protection company. <laughs> I am gonna protect my hands. Like I think like I can't have five years in a row of broken hands. Um, so one of the things that I thought was important was skier's thumb. Um, one of like my friends who's like my hand surgeon, Randy Viola, my, my hand surgeon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, like I like asked him a bunch of questions. He was telling me like he does, I forget, like hundreds of skier's thumb surgeries a year on race kids, it seems like. And so like I just took basically one of like my thumb guards after I broke a thumb and like molded our SciTech foam into like the thumb position. So that like it's hold, helping against the skier's thumb there and then having the super fabric on the outside and across the whole backside. So you're not just ripping through your gloves uh, once a week, especially when you're dragging your hands on coarse snow or ice or whatever it is. Um, and then having our SciTech foam along the way. So it allows for like your hand to move, but also gets hard on impact. Uh, so that's been super important for me, I think. Uh, Actually, I like, immediately felt way more confident skiing when I put these on because it's funny. Like, if I like try somebody else's gloves on, or like, yeah, I just am like, oh man, I would like be scared right skiing down right now because I feel like every single time I hit my hands on the base gates a lot, yeah. and your hands get demolished pretty quickly when you do that. That's a stationary object, but you're hitting it. Sometimes it's sixty miles an hour, but thirty, forty plus miles an hour. So that's that's big and then like I want to take it even a step further and have something that could be removable which is the handguard um, which goes across the whole not top knuckle area and then just like slides on this is like compatible with any glove but um, works especially well obviously with with ours and just goes right over the top and you can tighten it down with the two straps on there and you got like a boxing glove there, but it like, you can see it fits like seamlessly on there. And like when you're dragging your knuckles on the snow, that like slides nicely. And then like when you pound a gate at the bottom, at the base of a gate or even just like swide swiping it, like it's actually funny. You like look at mine and Tommy's and you're like shocked by how many gate marks <laughs> are on these things. You're like, oh man, like. <laughs> those would have really hurt um so yeah these are definitely huge i mean hand injuries are the number one injuries in skiing um and they're annoying because it doesn't stop you from skiing it's just stops you from skiing well and it's, it's just it's it's a it's an unnecessary injury that can be avoided with good protection yeah totally um yeah that's the i love these gloves they're, yeah. they're gonna they're a little like Definitely at first a little more heavy duty than your run of the mill glove that's out there. Um, so I would, when you're looking at sizing, I would go out size up uh, one. So give yourself a little more, a little bit larger. So if you're a size small, you might want to consider going size medium. Um, but of course, you can uh, try them on at the shop too, and they get dialed in that way. Uh, yeah. And they're like stiff for the first like two days, but then they like break in like custom nicely so yeah that's, that's true. also like a big yeah. thing it's like you're like oh they're stiff in the shop and then you're like well <laughs> ski for two days and that would be nice yeah, yeah. and they'll actually protect you <laughs> and we also uh, have gloves too this is like for the free skier even like if you're getting into uh speed skiing if you're into super g starting in there uh, this is a more of a low profile uh glove that um but I think I use the mitts anyways with the Super G, right? Type of yeah, yeah, I wear mitts and everything. Yeah. But so this is just some guys like to wear gloves for yeah. downhill. Yeah. 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 Some people are just glove people, but. Some people are just glove people, some people are just people. Um, yeah. Last but not least, this is a, I'm a, I was a kind, of, kind of excited. I think uh, Tommy and I were the most excited. The return of the Custom Pro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is something I wore when I was racing, but, uh, this is a really cool, uh, idea that we, uh, came up to, you know, back, well, I think this was back in the 2008 days. This was like early beginnings, um, where we took our Slytech foam and we put it onto a stealth top, onto, uh, onto a GS jacket. 
And uh, we're able to, uh, you're able to move this pad throughout uh, the, the, the garment. And you can, uh, if you're getting more of those bruises in a certain area, you're able to switch it on, put it on one side or the other, or more behind or more in the front, so you can be more comfortable. And uh, this is, yeah, this is a cool addition to our line or bring back to our line this year um, because of demand from our athletes. And uh, yeah, this is the custom pro jacket. That's it. Let's head to toe. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. I guess we'll uh, go to your questions. We'll, Do we I'll, have any? Well, let's see here. I we haven't gone to my computer in the last <laughs> little bit, but. Um, let's see here. We'll go to some questions if we have some questions along the way here. It's loading. <laughs> And I'll go to the ski racing this one. So if there's questions here. Someone asked if all the prices are in US. All the prices are in US, yeah. Yep. Yep. All Any other questions on there? <laughs> Haley is in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure everything looks okay. Nothing. No. Other, no other. <laughs> No other questions. Well, <laughs> well, I gotta have some questions on here. <laughs> um, Mark, you you can play interviewer for a couple I minutes. Can, yeah, I could play interviewer. Well, what do you? Uh, what kind of what questions would you want to? What can you foresee? Some of these kids want to know about what's if going on. If you're between sizes on a back protector, what do you do? Uh, well, I I would recommend sizing up. I think. In the end, uh, you're able, you're, you want to have more covered, um, especially, and what's really cool about our back protectors is the straps. We have our friend here. Let's see if I take them off. And you want to make sure it goes low enough down there. Like, you don't want, like, the back protector starting yeah. right at your, like, at your waist. At you your want it, like, going down your, your butt a little bit. You can actually back here. We extended the we extended the strap and the velcro on the back, so you can move. That'll actually allow the back protector to move up and down uh, your back, and you can have it fit a little higher, fit a little lower. It's cool about the nakeds as well. Um, I've seen a lot of people do at home. Is you can literally cut the foam uh, if it's too big. So that's like the easiest way to do it at home. Uh, so you're like, you can have your, essentially your custom fit back protector that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's it. Cool. I, I got nothing else. I, I talk to you every day, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to watch you though. What is yeah. Solden happening? What's going on? What's, what's going on in Europe? Yeah, so Solden got moved up a week earlier. Um, so it's now the 17th, I want to say, of October. Uh, unfortunately, we're not racing Beaver Peak this year. That's a major bummer. Not racing in the U.S. Um, Beaver Peak's a hill I love, and um, yeah, it's a bummer. I mean, I was I was saddened when we uh, when I saw that, but kind of saw it coming with what's going on in the world. Um, then they condensed some races, so we're actually having the same weekend as Beaver Creek. We're having two giant slums in Mountains Air. They're kind of doing something interesting, which makes sense. Like they're splitting up all the tech and speed races, so like speed will all like be together, all the speed guys will be together and then all the tech guys will be together at the venues. Um, of course, there's gonna be guys that go back and forth, but limiting kind of that like cross contamination, I guess is, is what they're going for. Uh, two races in out of and there's a big break actually. There's not another giant slalom. There's out of of course, but there's not another giant slalom between out of Loden and world championships. So there's a big break in the season then. And then it's, uh, I think two races in Bonsko again, and then the Constant Goran final. So it's uh, there's it's, it's like really condensed into two blocks. Like beginning of the season, like the whole season really happens like December and first weekend of January, and then mid -fe mid late February through end of March. So um, be interesting that that way. Um, I'll probably try to see what happens, but like my plan is to try to. I'll fly over to Europe for Val d'Isere and, and Alphabetia and then hopefully come home for Christmas for a couple days before heading back over. So 
it's kind of like trying to figure out what we have to do quarantine wise over there. Um, we've been getting tested like right before we fly and then right when we get there. And our testing protocol is pretty crazy over there. We get tested every three days or so. So, um, and we're like, whether we're in the hood or whether we're going to Europe, we're just like staying off on our own and self isolating and not really going out into the public <laughs> outside the, the ski hill. So, um, I guess we're lucky that skiing is naturally yeah. socially distanced and, uh, you know, wearing a mask everywhere in, in public and, um, yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, hopefully I can keep coming back and forth, um, since I have three kids now. So that's <laughs> important. Otherwise, yeah, we're trying to figure out if the family's coming over to Europe for the February, March stint of it. So yeah, yeah, we'll see. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting, but looking forward to it. Decided to go skiing again, racing, feeling the, feeling the itch for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling it too. I can't wait to go ski. Right on. Right on, right. Ted. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. 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 Thanks everybody. Uh, and Thank we, you. We hope you just answered all your questions, but Hey, uh, myself and Haley over here in the background, we're, uh, we're in here in our park city office and, uh, we're ready to answer all your questions. Do not hesitate to do that little at uh, info um, uh, email. And we're actually like get excited because we can like help you uh, through the process. So, uh, you know, any question, there's no such thing as a dumb question when it comes to this stuff. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great weekend. Well, somebody asked about your new World Pro Ski Tour. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I'm planning on doing some of the events. I guess it depends on uh, when and where those events are for the World Pro Ski Tour. They haven't really come up with a finalized schedule, but um, if all goes well, I'll be home for that January, uh, timeframe. So hopefully do some of those. Those, those are fun last year. Um, it's like a challenging, different kind of scenario than World Cup ski race and that World Pro Tours tour, you know, having to like, I'm used to like 10 seconds race already, like, and then going on my own time terms and, you know, the pro racing is fun because you have to go when the, the gate opens and, you know, having somebody next to you, I think draws out the mistakes and brings anxiety and uh it's you know parallel slalom so it's different than uh i train on a normal basis but those are a lot of fun i think it's great having some more ski racing in america especially in a year like this where we're not having a great world cup race in the u.s having the world pro ski tour will be fun to have around the u.s and so those would be cool let me see if there's any other questions on there yeah I don't know. I think uh, Carlo Carlo wants to know if your arms are long and skinny, is there a way to adjust the length of the strap on the arm guards? Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, here this is a cool trick. Is I do see this on uh, on on kids that are like, hey, I want to, I need an arm guard. I'm getting closer to the gates, um, and it's uh, I need to have it tight to my forearm. So simple uh, answer is here. What we did was we just literally added this nice piece of little Velcro. And what you can do is just pass it back onto itself. Then you close it with that piece of Velcro and you're able to have a much tighter uh, <laughs> strap that way. Um, so you can, yeah, you, it's really nice and snug. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how we figured that out. Uh, another question, uh, he says, I love the race suit fit, have you considered a similar product for free skiing? Race suit? Oh, uh, the, this, no, the, this guy, uh, that back protector? Back protector, we would have to have a little more info on that one. Um, <laughs> and then um, where can we see your gear in person? Ah. Uh, Many shops uh, all over the U.S. I mean, here in Park City, we were uh, with Cole Sport um, in New England from PJ. One of the uh, he fit my boots <laughs> since I was a little kid uh, up in Waterbury, Vermont at Race Stock Sports. Uh, Sportoma carries us uh, in the in the Midwest. Bonhoff carries us. Uh, you're able to also Race Place uh, is an awesome uh, online uh, retailer that has pretty much A to Z in uh, ski racing products uh, that will, you'll be able to cover yourself uh, with them. Um, we have a dealer locator uh, on our website yeah. that you just put in your, uh, your zip code and you'll find the closest one. Uh, 
we've made leaps and bounds uh, as a brand. So we're more and more available at, uh, at your local uh, shop. And uh, by all means, if you really want Shred, go to your shop ask them if they could reach out to us and we're able to, uh, to help them out. We'd, we'd love to go through that shop to support your retailer. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Great. Enjoy your winter, everybody. Cheers, Thank guys. Thank you guys for joining us. <laughs> and come shred with us. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm.